Welcome to the Six Miles to Supper podcast. I'm your host, Kayla Cox, and I've lost over 80 pounds with intermittent fasting six days a week, eating whatever I wanted at my meals, taking a cheat day every Sunday, and walking six miles a day. And I'm here to help you on your weight loss journey. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the idea of thinking the pounds off. You know, uh, I remember several years ago hearing about the idea of, you know, thinking yourself thin. And from time to time, I still think about that. Like the, the idea, how, how important is your thinking to weight loss? And the more I thought about it, the more I thought, you know, it is true. You, you do, in a way, think yourself thinner. Your brain is very, very powerful. And there are some parts of thinking that can actually stifle your weight loss. I think Um, I found that. And then other parts of it are, are truly helpful. And I think often overlooked. So many times the focus is really on uh, the types of foods you're eating, like, oh, you got to cut out this or cut out that and you can't have this anymore. And, and instead, what I've seen in my own experience was that when I stopped thinking that way and I started thinking a different way, that's when I really had long-term success with weight loss. So in today's episode, I thought it'd be fun to talk about the different types of thinking uh, that have been both detrimental and the ones that have been helpful on my weight loss journey. When I was putting this episode together, what I realized was this is really more of an art than a science. You know, it's like with anything, you can take thinking to an extreme. And, and we'll talk about the, that negative in, in a moment. Uh, that's the first big negative is that you can think too much about weight loss. But on the other hand, you do have to think some. And it's, it's really just about, you know, sometimes thinking more and sometimes just kind of saying, okay, I'm overthinking this and, and just kind of playing around with it until you get that right mix. So the first thing I always think about when I'm thinking about thinking, uh, the thing to avoid is analysis paralysis. And this, you know, it's very tricky because it seems like you're doing the right thing when you're doing it. It's like, I've got to figure out the exact right thing to do, the the best possible plan, you know, and, and you have to consider everything. But the problem is that that can lead to inaction. Uh, it can lead to just being in eternal research mode and, and you just take no action. And then year after year passes and you're still sitting there overweight and unhappy about it, but yet you're not doing anything about it. And it can be really frustrating because you can feel like, well, I'm doing a lot. And that's where I was in 2014. I spent the entire year pretty much just researching things and trying to figure out like what will work. As I've said before, you know, I think you can save yourself a lot of time by realizing every plan out there that you've ever heard of, it works if you'll just do it. That's always the key. It's like these things can work for the short term, but it's just a matter of you're, you're probably not going to eat grapefruit and that's it for the rest of your life. I mean, it's, it just doesn't work. It works for the short term. It'll pull some pounds off, but in the long run, you can't stick with it. And just realizing that, that probably any plan that you pick out there is probably good enough. And so instead of using a whole bunch of time trying to, you know, look through all the scientific papers and figure out, you know, what thing is best. And I can tell you right now, there are always going to be new papers, you know, being published and they're going to say contradictory things. And, and it's, it's going to keep you, uh, paralyzed if you just always are just looking at the next research paper and and what the study said and what that study said, quite frankly, you're going to find what you're looking for. You know, that was something I realized back in 2014, I was researching. And after a, a while, I realized I was having this tendency to try to find proof that I could not lose weight. And when I realized that, I was like, oh, maybe I'm really wasting my time here. You know, I, I would be basically trying to figure out a reason why I should fail at this or a reason why I shouldn't even try, which kind of led me to realize, you know, I need to change my thinking about this. Uh, the way I'm thinking about weight loss is more along the lines of, I'm going to fail. So show me how that's true, Google. <laughs> and instead I said, okay, I've got to figure out what's going to work for me. So, you know, I would say if you find yourself in that eternal research mode, you know, maybe you're listening to lots of, lots of podcasts like this one, or, you know, watching a lot of YouTube videos or reading a lot of books or reading a lot of scientific articles, uh, a lot of journal articles. And then, but then you look at your actual actions and you're not really taking action. I think that's a big sign that you're in analysis paralysis and you just need to maybe back off thinking just a little bit. And along with that is this idea of 
overthinking. You you can think yourself out of a lot of things if you give yourself enough time. And you can even think yourself out of even wanting to lose weight, you know. And I think another thing that can help you recognize if you're, if you're just overthinking things is if you if you realize that you're saying what if a lot. You know, there there are so many fears that came up for me uh, which were just unfounded, but yet it was because I was thinking so much about weight loss, you know, it's like, what if I, you know, do intermittent fasting and that kills my metabolism? What if I lose the weight and I look worse? What if, you know, uh, what if I lose weight and my husband doesn't, you know, think I'm attractive anymore? You know, there's just so many, uh, ridiculous little things. And that was all from just really thinking too much about it, just overthinking. Now, that being said, those are some negative ways that thinking can kind of affect the weight loss journey, but there are a lot of ways Ways that thinking can really truly help. And I think the most important way it can be helpful is that you can sit there and think through various scenarios. And instead of wasting, you know, months of your life or maybe even years of your life uh, doing plans that really won't ultimately work for you in the long run, the thing is, you know, you know yourself really well and you know how you've behaved in the past and you know how you'll likely behave in the future. And uh, instead of just trying to force yourself into to huge changes that you don't foresee yourself sticking with, you can then, you know, eliminate those possibilities and say, okay, you know, yes, maybe that would work, but that ain't going to work for me. And then you can move on to the next possible plan. So, you know, like even with intermittent fasting, like let's say you, you sit down and you look at your life and in, and on the surface you think, well, intermittent fasting would be a good idea. I could eat, you know, like, let's say you say, Oh man, one meal a day that works for me. I could go, uh, you know, all day long without eating and just eat supper. Okay. But then when you sit down and you think about your life, you think about your day-to-day life and you realize that, you know, uh, every day you have business lunches <laughs> and those are times when people are going to expect you to eat. That's going to be, you know, a, a reason to reconsider and to say, you know, that probably won't work. And so instead of kind of like banging your head against the wall, you can say, okay, so probably OMAD wouldn't work, but maybe two meals a day might work. And and then you can, you know, mentally run through your week and say, would would that basically work? You know, your life is going to be different. It's going to change, but you can just say right now, based on how my life is right now, would this work? And do I see it, you know, being something that I think could work for the long term? And by the way, you know, when you're, when you're doing this, when you're sitting down and you're going through these scenarios, it's really important to be in a quiet place by yourself with no distractions. So no phone, no computer, no TV, nothing, nothing on in the background, just get by yourself and really think about these things. It's so very difficult to think when you have all those distractions around, it just, it really is hard. So sit down in the quiet and really think these things through. And I remember back in 2016, when I was sitting there, I remember I was sitting in my bedroom, you know, I had young kids at the time, but I was by myself. I had just waited until I had kind of a quiet moment and I just sat down and I wrote down, you know, here's what I think I could do. And, uh, it, it, in that moment, I, it was very clear. I was like, you know, I really, I want to eat all the food. Like I do. I don't want to say I'm going to eat, you know, only protein or I'm not going to eat sugar. I I really do want to eat these things. And, and furthermore, I don't believe that they're bad for you. You know, that was something else that when I really sat down and thought about what do I believe, you know, when, when I, when I thought about it, I thought, you know, people have been eating bread for millennia. (laughs) And I, I believe that it's fine to eat, you know? And so just understanding my own beliefs was very helpful, but that was something that I really had to come to on my own in the quiet, you know, that everything is just so noisy, you know, like if you're on Facebook, or, or any other kind of just surfing the internet, you're going to be bombarded or not. You're going to be, you're constantly being bombarded, not only with articles that are written from one point of view or another, but also with ads that are, you know, trying to get you to, to think a certain way. And so getting, just getting away from that, just taking a step back and just being alone with your thoughts, I, I find really can help you get some clarity. And so when you're sitting there thinking, it's good to be circumspect, which just basically means thinking about 
your surroundings, kind of being a little cautious, you know, and what I mean by that is a lot of times what I found with myself, especially is I would just kind of plunge headlong into diets. I just wouldn't think about anything else, but what will bring the pounds off my body? I really didn't think about how is this going to feel at a birthday party? How is this going to feel, you know, when I'm uh, having supper with my family? Uh, what what will this feel like on a day-to-day basis? And that always derailed me after a while. Again, in the short term, I could do things. I could, I could get rid of f- major food groups or I could, you know, do some sort of crazy, uh, you know, substitution or, or drink shakes and things like that. But in the end, and I didn't like that and I wouldn't stick with it. And those things didn't fit well with my family. And just realizing that was very, very helpful. And when you're making your plan, but also just on the weight loss journey, it's important to be introspective, which just means that you're thinking about how you're feeling and you're paying attention to your kind of your mental state, your train of thought and your inner dialogue. And that's really helpful. That that inner dialogue can sometimes be cruel and and it can be untrue. But there are other times when you can really be a lot more honest with yourself. Um, resentment especially can, can crop up in there and it can it can tell you the truth about a situation. Um, you know, you, you sometimes are just more honest with yourself in your head than you are with the words that you say out loud to other people. And just paying attention to that can be really helpful. You know, if you find yourself being really resentful uh, of whatever plan you've chosen, no matter what it is, it's important to listen to that and to change and to make it so that you're not feeling resentment. You're not feeling bitter about your plan, that, you, that you're enjoying it, that you're enjoying this whole journey. Another thing that's really helpful is to think analytically. So this requires that you have data, basically. And this is just one of those things that I think some people discount how important it is. So they think, well, I'll, you know, I'll start doing this and I'm just going to pay attention to how my clothes fit and I'm not going to get on the scale and I won't be a slave to the scale. And look, I I don't want to be a slave to the scale either, but I do know that the scale is a good tool and it can tell you in a second what is going on with your weight. And if you are trying to control your weight, it's really important to know what that number is doing. And I've found it so helpful to keep track of the, those numbers. And, and I have everything in a spreadsheet. I've been keeping track of all this stuff uh, since 2015 when I started weighing myself again. And, um, and it's been so helpful because there've been so many points on the weight loss journey where I was really convinced, like I'm, I'm plateauing, like uh, this plan has stopped working or whatever. And, and mentally that's where I was. But when I could sit down with the data and it was just black and white numbers, then I could see like, oh, wait, no, I'm not stuck. Uh, the, the number is actually moving down or it's moving down really slowly. Or the most common thing was it really hasn't been long enough to tell. <laughs> like I, this is like, it feels like forever. And it's been like a week, which is really no time at all uh, to, to really see, you know, is the number trending down or not? Because look, if you're, if you're losing at a pound a week, uh, which is a good clip, uh, you know, but your weight is going to fluctuate some. So it takes several weeks of really going through and, and seeing like, is this actually working or is it not? And so just being able to have that data and to look at it and to really see, and it's very helpful too, if you're in addition to keeping track of numbers, making notes, making notes about what you're doing or maybe what has derailed you, you know, uh, things like, oh, you know, at this point, these people came in from out of town. And so I totally just took the week off knowing that and being able to see over time, okay, when people come in from out of town, this is what happens with my weight. And just knowing that is very helpful. It, It keeps you from feeling discouraged because you can say, okay, there's a clear cause and effect relationship here. It's not just like mysteriously, my weight went up last week, there were, there were things that were happening and th- that is the, the root source of it. And to see that cause and effect relationship, it takes the magic out of it. You know, like I, it's so funny to me when I look back on how I used to think about weight loss, I used to think it was kind of like a weird combination of like luck and like, I don't know, not magic, I guess, but just luck, you know, like it didn't, it wasn't like a clear cause and effect relationship. But once I started tracking my data and really being 
consistent with the plan, I started to see, oh, it's just when I'm being inconsistent uh, with, with things. And that's when the, the plan gets derailed. And I can't tell you how many times that has been so helpful during those times where, you know, like maybe things weren't going well for whatever reason, you know, like it's just a stressful time and maybe my weight was creeping up a little. It's like, wait, what, what is going on right here? And to just know that, to just be simply thoroughly convinced that there's always a reason. It's not like just some random thing. Oh, well, the scale's moving up. No, there's always a reason (laughs) why the scale is moving up. Uh, Just like there's always a reason for the scale moving down. It's not about luck. It's all about your actions. And and keeping track of your data can prove that to yourself, uh, which is very, very helpful as far as the long-term outlook uh, for weight loss, because maintenance is for the rest of your life. So learning that these costs and effect relationships and learning how to track your data and to look at what's happening uh, can help you to succeed at this, not only in the short term, but in the long term. And then the last type of thinking that has really helped me uh, when it comes to weight loss has been visualization. And a lot of people I think are going to be like, you know, like really, is that going to help to to just visualize yourself? Just think of yourself at a healthy weight. Will that help you get to that weight? And in my experience, yeah. I mean, there's some interesting uh, research about visualization, like in athletes, when they visualize themselves doing well, they do well. And it was helpful for me, you know, in 2015, I was trying to figure out like, well, what, what am I aiming for? Like, what's even reasonable? I said, you know, I would really love to be around where I was when I was in college. At that point, I was at a healthy weight. I was active. I felt really good. And I was like, that I think is a good thing to kind of aim for. So I just, I I have kept that picture of myself in my head. Now at that time, you know, when I was 222 pounds, there, there was a good bit of space there. You know, there, there was a good 75 pounds or so between 70. Yeah. I would say about 75 pounds. Cause I was in the one forties in college. So, uh, so there was a, a lot of weight between me and that number. So it was, it was kind of hard at first to kind of think, well, could I really get down to that? But I thought, well, I was there once so I could get there again. And uh, just keeping that picture in my head always uh, since since 2015, I've always just kept that in my head of like, that's where I want to be. That's where I want to stay. That's in maintenance. Like that's where that's where I want to maintain. And that has been very helpful to me. Uh, I don't know exactly why it works or or how it works. You can certainly look into the, uh, the research that's been done, but it does seem to me that it is helpful. So can you think the pounds off? Yeah, I think you really can. I think it's a major part of weight loss is the thinking part, the thinking about your plan and the thinking about, are you doing your plan? The the paying attention and then the analyzing of the results is really uh, important to do all that and to think about, you know, how sustainable is this? And, you know, and as you go along, realizing that you may change, you know, something that is really important to you right now may end up being not that important. Your schedule may change. But again, if you just always have this attitude of, you know, I'm going to think this through and then make decisions based on facts and about, you know, data, uh, then they can really help you in the long term to lose the weight and keep it off. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you in the next one. Do you want to lose the weight without getting rid of the foods you love and that you know you'll go back to eating again anyway? My book, The Laid Back Guide to Intermittent Fasting, teaches you how to practice intermittent fasting so that you lose the weight sustainably and keep it off for good. You can get the audiobook read by me for free when you sign up for your 30-day trial of Audible. The link is in the show notes. And if you've gotten value from this podcast and you'd like to let other people know about it, it'd be great if you could leave a review on either iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. Thanks.